Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I will discuss with you about chemical coordination. When we talk of chemical coordination, the first thing which comes in our mind is endocrine gland. Endocrine gland is a gland which secretes hormones. Other thing about endocrine gland is that secretion is collected by blood because endocrine gland is a ductless gland. Let us begin with pineal gland. You already know about pituitary gland which is present in the brain attached to hypothalamus. Now the pineal gland is present behind pituitary gland or towards the back side and it is an important gland. It is very small but very important. It secretes a hormone called melatonin and this hormone controls circadian rhythm or diurnal rhythm in our body. What do we mean by circadian rhythm? 24 hours rhythm in the body. Children, you all sleep in the night, wake up in the morning, go to school, come back, have lunch, in the evening going for the play, in the late evenings studying and then sleeping. You have some routine for whole day. This particular rhythm is controlled by pineal. If I talk of circadian rhythm, I primarily mean day and night, sleeping in the night, working during the daytime. So that rhythm is maintained by pineal. Also, pineal gland is taken as antigonadal gland. The reason being that gonads are most active in the night and most inactive during the day whereas pineal is just the opposite it is inactive during the night and inactive during the day and that is why it is called antigonadal pineal being an important gland it also maintains our body temperature you know that you are able to maintain your body temperature at 98.4 degrees, whether outside temperature is more or less. Pineal has another important role to play and that is maintenance of body temperature. We being mammals are able to maintain our body temperature irrespective of the temperature outside the body in the environment, low or high. And that maintenance is important and that is done by hormone melatonin or by the gland pineal. One more fact about pineal is that it is photosensitive. That means it is having some effect of sunlight on the gland and that is why it is able to control circadian rhythm. It also influences metabolism of the body. You know students how important the metabolic processes in our body are and how important it is to maintain the metabolic orders in the body and melatonin, the hormone of pineal gland is able to influence the metabolism, the metabolic part of our body. So pineal is important for many things but the main thing is maintenance of circadian rhythm and its nature being antigonadal. Next gland which I am going to discuss is thyroid gland. We have a pair of thyroid glands and these two thyroid glands are located on either side of trachea and both are interconnected by a bridge called isthmus. Thyroid being very important for us, it has thyroid follicles which have a cell lining around it and these cells secrete a substance called colloid. Thyroid gland has thyroid follicles and each follicle is lined by a layer of cell. The cell nature is columnar epithelial cell. These cells secrete a substance called colloid and that is collected in the center of the thyroid follicle or in the lumen of the thyroid follicle. 
Now this colloid is mother of thyroid hormones, namely thyroxine. Of course, there are more hormones from thyroid. Now this mother substance our body has produced. Now from this substance thyroxine should come out. But that process will need presence of iodine. And that iodine we have to provide from outside through food source. In other words, we have raw material to make thyroxine or thyroid hormones. Only one thing we have to provide from outside and that is iodine. Suppose we are not having enough iodine in the body, then colloid will not be converted to thyroxine. This iodine, uh, dear children, you can easily have in food and kind of food like water chestnut, in Hindi it is called singhara, or mulberries, falsa, and seafood if uh, one is non-vegetarian, and any food which is grown in the soil, under the soil, means like uh, carrots, like uh, jimikand, anything which grows under the soil will have iodine. So what I am trying to say that give some thought on the food which you eat so that you are having some iodine. You need very little iodine in micro quantities and you are able to accumulate it in the body or collect it in the body and it remains in your body and can be utilized if and when required. So if we have iodine deficiency then we have to blame ourselves because we have to take it through our food. All other things are present in your body. Now the hormones from thyroid are many thyroxine, triiodothyronine, calcitonin and as I have told you iodine requirement is always there. Now there are some details about the hormones. Thyroxine which is T4 and triiodothyronine which is T3. In fact it is T3 which is produced from the colloid in the thyroid. It is a substance which will now produce T4 or in other words T3 will be converted to T4. What is the reason behind this? Why our thyroid is not producing T4 directly? Why T3 and then T3 getting converted to T4? There is a solid reason behind this. T3 can remain as T3 for very long time. But once it is converted to T4, T4 that is thyroxine has half life. Half life means in the particular amount of time, say 8 minutes, it is converted to half. In either 8 minutes, again further half. That means very soon it will disappear from our blood, whether we use it or we don't use it. So, if we are producing T4 directly, then we had to go on producing T4 all the time, otherwise due to half life, it will disappear very fast. That is not the case with T3. Once it is produced, it can remain in the body for any length of time. So what happens? Some T3 is converted to some T4. This T4 is utilized and when more is required, then more T3 is converted to more T4. And that is how we are able to maintain T4 level in our blood because thyroxine is required to maintain BMR, basal metabolic rate. And if we are not able to maintain BMR, then we are going to have very adverse consequences. So that is the reason why we produce T3. It is converted to T4. Otherwise, T3 is much more potent than T4. Coming to calcitonin. Calcitonin is another hormone from thyroid which takes care of calcium in our body. How? Food which we eat, we get calcium. That calcium is digested, absorbed, comes to blood. Now it cannot remain in blood. We don't have to keep calcium in blood. It should go to bone and should be stored there. So calcitonin will help calcium to travel from blood to bone where it is stored and makes our bones more strong. So that is the function of this particular hormone. We know that we need calcium in our blood up to some level, not at very high level. 
some level we need so that nervous conduction in the body goes on well because calcium is the thing which we need for nervous stimulation and nervous conduction. But more than that we do not require it to be in blood so extra should go to the bone and should remain stored there. As I have told you dear students iodine requirement is must and we should take care that we are not short of iodine as far as our thyroid is concerned because if there is iodine deficiency then there will be thyroid hormone deficiency as well and hence one will behave as hypothyroid function hypothyroid person we should be neither hyperthyroid nor hypothyroid both the situations are bad both are mal functions of thyroid gland i would like to explain the situation of hypothyroidism in this particular slide you can see a big goiter which is due to hypothyroid condition goiter means growth now what happens in hypothyroid condition we have to start a story from hypothalamus and then come to pituitary you have heard about thyroid stimulating hormone coming from pituitary and for this hormone the releasing factor came from hypothalamus so thyroid stimulating hormone releasing factor came from hypothalamus to anterior pituitary then anterior pituitary secreted tsh thyroid stimulating hormone and then this thyroid stimulating hormone is stimulated thyroid gland and the result should be release of thyroxine but if thyroxine is not there then situation is going to be very different first of all let us see if thyroxine is there then what happens which is a normal condition this thyroxine will do negative feedback for tsh through hypothalamus so more TSH will not come for some time as long as we have thyroxine. When thyroxine level will go low then negative feedback will disappear and hence TSH will come and release more of thyroxine. But suppose thyroxine is not released then there is no negative feedback for TSH hence TSH will go on coming. It will be pouring on thyroid all the time and hence will be stimulating thyroid gland all the time all the follicles and they will start growing in size in the form of colloid which is secreted under the influence of TSH and that is the reason why in the hypothyroid condition a goiter will develop. Sometimes child is born without thyroid gland in that case his development will not be normal he will be called cretin and the process cretinism he will grow up to the age of 6 or 7 and after that even if he increases age to 24, 30, 50 he will remain the same size as he was at the age of 8 and that is cretinism in the absence of thyroid gland. So children you have heard and understood about pineal gland today and about the function of thyroid gland and also disorders of thyroid malfunctions. With this, I come to the end of this session. Thank you.